so nice to meet you. I read about Orfield Laboratories online and I was so curious about it and was so excited about experiencing it. Tell me why the chamber is so popular with the public. Well, it's had coverage originally in the Daily Mail in London and the Daily Mail is the most connected newspaper in the world and so the day after it appeared on their website we had thousands of inquiries and we had inquiries from thousands of news media. So we had NBC Today Show called us, CBS Morning, um, CBC, BBC, and we subsequently did all kinds of shows because of that. So the way the Daily Mail reports, it's a little bit gossipy and it's <laughs> a little bit stretched and, and they get people excited. This chamber was initially built to test products. How does it help in the testing of products? What kind of products are tested in there? It was originally built by Sunbeam Appliances in Chicago. They didn't build it, they ordered it. And it was intended to be used for small appliance repair. And then Sunbeam got a new chairman in who was a big cost cutter and he said, let's close our research center in Chicago and let's let the Japanese do our research. And that became for sale uh, with a two week condition that you, you had to buy it, pay for it and get it out of there in two weeks. And, and Motorola cell phones and IBM computers were both interested in it, but neither one of them could move quickly, so we made the only offer. And we hired the University of Chicago football team uh, with, a, with a foreman who I sent out to load it into three semi-trucks and to ship it here. And it turns out it's a, it's a size that can handle many products. So anechoic chambers come in all sizes depending on what size products you have. But most products are smaller, and so it, it handles a broad variety. And it's the only anechoic chamber in a public lab in the United States that's, accred that's accredited by the U.S. government. So if you want to do accredited testing in an anechoic chamber, you must come here. And it's to find out how quiet the product needs to be? Is, is that what it no, does? No, no. It's, it's, well, it's, it's quiet so that it'll be quieter than the product, but principally an anechoic chamber is absorbent so that you don't hear any echo, so that when you're listening to the product or measuring the product, you don't get a room effect, you simply get the product itself. So if I'm talking to you in an anechoic chamber, that's the only place you'll ever be where all you'll hear is my voice with no reflections. I see. Okay. So it's extremely accurate source information. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the level and the frequency distribution and other characteristics that often are helped by a quiet space. I know what my experience was like in the chamber. Mm -hmm. What do most people report, or have there been any like unusual things that people have said once they've come out of the chamber that they experienced? Well, well, when you get a group in, there's often one or two people who will walk in the chamber and walk out. They, they feel claustrophobic, they don't want to be there, and they say, I'll skip this part of the tour. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there's a few, and, and, and it, it's something where when you close the door and and it gets quieter and quieter and all of a sudden you're starting to hear people's stomachs gurgle and, <laughs> and things and, and, and you, you become a real source of noise if you're making any noise. And so it's, it's, it's something where people get highly sensitized and a little bit embarrassed initially and then they often settle down and, and seem to like it. But the people who, who are more meditative and more, um, more self-focused tend to find it easier and people who are more extroverted tend to find it more difficult. Interesting. Yeah. What you were describing actually is how I felt during a quiet place. Mm -hmm. Like you just want to be quiet through the whole thing because you feel very self-conscious. What was your experience watching the movie? Did it remind you of the chamber at all? Yeah, I mean it, it reminded me of the chamber and it reminded me of many any old English films in the sense that you sit, you saw these long vignettes of filming and you saw and there's you, you broke in at a, at a non-symmetric place where you didn't even you didn't know the beginning of the story right away, and it was perfectly silent, and so you just got to think in silence. And I th I thought it was peaceful. I thought it was interesting. I thought it was well done. Yeah, I found it very peaceful as well. Mm -hmm. um, I understand that you've done research on the effect of noise on people with degenerative disease. We've done How? we've done research with regard to people with autism and dementia. Okay. Okay. And what effect does the chamber have on them? I, with autism, it tends to have a, a, a very positive effect. People, uh, autistic folks who we've studied, will go into the chamber for half an hour, and they'll come out and they'll say, "My brain hasn't felt this good in years." Mm. Okay, people with dementia are are more non-symmetric in the response because 
they're in more different places with dementia. If it's early dementia, they generally love the chamber. If it's later dementia, there's a confusion. Oh, I see. Where can people go to find out more about Orfield Laboratories and possibly visit it? Well, you go to our website, and on our website there's a tour you can pull down, or you can simply send a note to info at Orfield Labs, and we'll send you a, a tour description of the sound studio or a tour description of the anechoic chamber or both. And the website is? Orfieldlabs.com. Okay. Thank you very much for talking to me today. Thank you.